Well, welcome everyone to a state of innovation. First in flight, the first state university, the innovative Research Triangle Park, and of course, what was Black Wall Street right here in Durham. For many people, the American dream is starting your own business. Our small, small businesses are the backbone of our economy. They create good paying jobs and sometimes they grow into big businesses. To start a business though, you need money. And there are a lot of smart people with great ideas and a work ethic who with some capital investment can start a successful business. This is a great example of a successful business started by a black woman. Yet in the private sector, black-led companies receive only 1% of venture funding and only 2% of venture funding goes to women. Think of all the innovation that's being left on the sidelines due to artificial barriers. We're taking on that challenge here in North Carolina. We've doubled the number of historically underutilized businesses. We've doubled the number of dollars that are contracted with historically underutilized businesses for goods and services in North Carolina. One third of our construction investments are with historically underutilized business. And thanks to the Biden-Harris administration, we were able to start the retool program during the pandemic to help those businesses out. Now comes even more help from the Biden-Harris administration. This administration has done powerful work to expand opportunities for everybody, especially underserved and underutilized businesses. Under this administration, 2.6 million jobs have been created for black workers. This is the kind of leadership that we need. I welcome my good friend, the Vice President Kamala Harris, who's done such an extraordinary job in helping to lead this country. And now I welcome the Deputy Secretary of the Treasury, which has also been very helpful to us, Wally Adameo. Wally. Thank you, Mr. Governor, Madam Vice President. It is so wonderful to be here. Uh, in my job as Deputy Secretary of the Treasury, you'll imagine that I see a lot of venture capitalists. Uh, but they don't look like the venture capitalists I saw today. Today I saw venture capitalists that look like America and look like Black Wall Street. Uh, people of color, women, who are more likely to lend to the type of business that we visited today, meaning that they're going to continue what we've already seen in the Biden-Harris administration, which is a historic growth of small businesses. 16 million small business applications through the first three years of the Biden-Harris administration a historic number, a doubling of black small businesses in America, 40% increase in Latin-owned small businesses in America. But as the governor said so eloquently, when I talk to these businesses, the thing they need is they need money to grow their dreams and to grow their businesses and to hire more Americans. And they have access to that money because of the hard work the vice president not only has done as vice president, but since she started when she was in the Senate. By passing legislation that gave money to CDFIs and MDIs, more than $12 billion, and that's money that they're lending to small businesses here in North Carolina, $1.4 billion of that $12 billion went to black-owned banks. That's going to put them in a position to lend $80 billion to businesses all over this country over the next decade. I'll say it again, $80 billion. That is because of the vice president's leadership, both as a senator, but also today as vice president. It's a place where she holds me accountable every day for making sure that money gets into the hands of hardworking <laughs> small businesses throughout this country. And today's announcement of $32 million into the hands of these venture capital firms will mean that these small businesses not only get access to equity financing, but also to the advice that means those small businesses will become big businesses. Today, black-owned businesses employ more than one million Americans and have a $50 billion annual payroll. That's only growing because of the hard work of the, of the Biden-Harris administration. And it is my honor and privilege to hand the floor over to a fearless leader for the growth of that small business ecosystem, the Vice President of the United States. Thank you, Wally. Let me first start by thanking the Governor Roy Cooper. Many of you know he and I served as attorneys general together many years ago. 
So I have known the governor's work for a very long time, and you have been an extraordinary partner to the president and me leading this beautiful state of North Carolina. And um, the governor, I think every time I arrive in North Carolina as vice president, has met me on the tarmac, and he is keeping track of my visits and has informed me this is my 10th visit to North Carolina <laughs> as vice president. And, um, and I'm really happy to be back. And I want to thank the deputy secretary because we have done a lot of work together. And um, you are always fighting for the people in a very real way, understanding the connection between access to opportunity and growth. And that is real. Um, because it also understands that not everyone has access to opportunity, but when provided with access, the talent is there, the capacity is there, the drive is there, the ambition is there, and growth and economic growth results. So that is the math in terms of what we are talking about. It is about meeting the capacity of communities with the resources that are necessary to strengthen our economy, and we all benefit from that work. We all benefit from an economy that is strong. So I want to take, I want to thank everybody here, including all of the investors who have really. I, I was so happy to share your stories and and to know about your passion and your commitment and your drive, um, and and your high level of expectation that you are also meeting with the resources that are necessary to grow and incentivize these businesses. Um, and to be here on historic Black Wall Street, this district in Durham is really, it's, it actually, I, I just stand here thinking of what has happened here over the years, both in terms of the strength of the community and then the challenges and the obstacles that were presented to this community, but how it has rebounded in such an extraordinary way. Um, and as the governor has said, over the past three years, the president and I have been very intentional about the work that we are doing to invest in communities in many ways, including through small businesses. Thus far, we have invested more than $3 billion in the entrepreneurs and small businesses here in North Carolina. And that investment has included billions of dollars in small business loans for thousands of small businesses in North Carolina. And I want to emphasize, when I say small businesses, I am including in that group entrepreneurs, those who have extraordinary ideas, um, often that involve uh, technology um, with an eye towards what we need to do with the cl climate crisis and things of that nature, startups. Um, we have, through those $3 billion, also invested hundreds of millions of dollars for North Carolina community banks, um, building on the work, as the Deputy Secretary said, that I did as a senator when we invested over $12 billion uh, nationally in community banks. And the investment in community banks here in Durham includes eight, $80 million for m and Bank just down the street. The investment of $3 billion also includes millions of dollars from the Economic Opportunity Coalition that I launched in 2022. And this is, again, testament to the leaders who are here, who are private sector investors and are matching and working with us through federal investments to reach a capacity that is extraordinary in terms of pooling together these federal dollars with these private investments. And I would like to thank them because it has been a coalition of groups that include nonprofits, banks, and technology companies who have all worked with us and worked with our administration once we created this coalition to, again, maximize the resources that can go to communities like this. And that brings me then to today, um, where we are announcing a new investment of $92 million primarily for early stage startups here in North Carolina. And we're very excited about it because this is just further testament to the capacity is, that is here, that is calling for this kind of attention and these resources. It is testament to the innovation that is occurring right here and the need then for us to, from Washington, D.C., understand how the nation benefits when we show the capacity of communities when they receive this kind of support and investment. 
And we are talking about clean energy companies, we are talking about AI, we are talking about technology companies in general. And this is in addition to the 32, so the 32 million from the president and, and my administration, the president and our administration, matched by $60 million from private sector venture capital partners, some of whom again are here today. And separately, uh, many here may know, the president and I, from the beginning of our administration, made a pledge, which we are on track to meet, to increase by 50 percent federal contracts going to minority-owned businesses. This is consistent with everything that is about the work that we are announcing today. In that, we understand that traditionally, Minority-owned businesses have received a fraction of federal contracts, often because the relationships are not there. The access, therefore, is not there, but the talent exists. And so our pledge to increase by 50 percent federal contracts going to minority-owned businesses is an acknowledgment of the fact that we must be intentional when we think about where are the greatest returns on investment. And Ultimately, yes, this is about the right thing to do. It is a good thing to do. But ultimately, it makes economic and financial sense for us to do this work. Because the bottom line, and yes, the bottom line, I speak in economic terms, is that this produces an extraordinary return on investment. And that is as much as any other reason why we are doing this work together with our partners. So again, I want to thank everyone um, for your leadership, for the inspiration, and for the model that Durham is providing for the rest of the country around these kinds of partnerships. Thank you all.